Hey kids, welcome to uh, Unit 5, Lesson 4, Reversing a 2D Array, Exercise Number 1. We're going to write a method to reverse shapes by implementing an algorithm we're going to develop on the Reversing a 2D Array Activity Guide. Before we head over there, let's take a minute and just look at the code we're working with. I think that'll help us write our algorithm better. We are instantiating some new objects here. Shape, they are from the shape class. We have a triangle, circle, square, star, pentagon, and a delicious donut. We're creating an array of arrays. And this is going to be called my shape. It has a triangle, circle, square, the first three, and then a star, pentagon, and a donut, all the bottom three. We are calling the shape object to print shapes my shape. And it looks like we have to call the reverse shape method we're going to write. Under shape, we're getting the type of shape passed along. Our constructor is taking that as a parameter. We have a get method that's returning the type. How we print the shapes, this is what we did in the last unit. It is a nested for loop. And this is going through the rows and columns and it's printing off each one at each row and column index. And it looks like we have a spot to write our reverse shape method. Let's head over to the worksheet and see what we're working with. This is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to take our starting state of our array. That's our triangle, circle, square, star, pentagon, donut, and we're going to reverse it. So it's in this order. And I want you to notice we're not taking the donut and swapping it with the triangle. We're only swapping within the row. Keep that in mind as we work along. And if you think back to unit three, lesson nine, we've already written the algorithm to reverse a 1D array. 2D is very similar. We're just gonna be adding a column. If you have trouble visualizing it, next we have a manipulative to help you visualize the array. You can cut these out and walk through your algorithm to reverse them over here. Biggest hint is this temp down here. Again, if you remember back to unit three, lesson nine, you'll remember this graphic. And you remember, we just simply can't say X equal Y, Y equals X. Cause once you set one equal to the other, that other one loses its value. So you have to temporarily store it. And that's what we're gonna be doing here. Here's where we have to do a little work. First part, we're gonna figure out at each index where these shapes should be. And then we're gonna write some sample code over here that will eventually take it into some pseudo code. This is referring to the array above. So at index zero, zero, that first position, it moves from the front all the way to the back. And let's go through and map out the indexes for the rest. We're gonna start at zero, one. And remember that middle shape, that's just staying there. So it's gonna be zero, one at the end. Our last shape, starts off at zero two, it'll end up at the front at zero, zero. Same thing for our next array. We're gonna start off at one, zero. That's gonna to go to one, two, the end of the line. Our one, one stays in the same position because there's only three elements. So it's one, one. And then one, two, goes to the front of the line, one, zero. Now we're gonna identify a pattern for reversing the shape. You can assume the following variables. We have row, a variable to traverse vertically, start column, a variable to traverse horizontally, and end column, the largest column index, and that's wherever we start at zero minus one. And if we want to go through each of the indexes, well, the first thing we need to do is tell it the row it needs to be at. And then once we get the row, we need to figure out where we're going horizontally. It says right here, we have start column.
that's going to be stored in a temporary value. Now we have to do our swap. And we still always want to be in the row. So row is always going to be the first bracket here. And the next one is we need to figure out where it needs to be at the end. And we have a variable right there called end column. So we're going to put end column. Now we want that row to be the start column. So row start column. Now we have to swap back from that temporary. So temp now, we still need to identify the row. And this time we need to tell it what the end column is going to be. Again, if you look at this graphic from unit three, lesson nine, exactly the same thing, except now we're worried about the 2D part or the column part. And that's the only difference. Once we memorize this pattern, we can repeat it over and over. Let's turn that into some pseudocode. We're gonna have to start off with a for loop. So we'll say for each row in shapes. And remember back to the graphic, we need to set a variable for the start and we need to send a variable for what is the end. So start column will be equal to zero. And then end column is going to be equal to the number of columns minus one. Now, while start column is less than the end column, we want to traverse through the array. Now we're just going to write what we did above. Temp equal shapes, two brackets. We want to identify the row we need to be at and then the start position for that column. Then shapes at row start column is now going to be equal to shapes at the row at the end of the column. And then we need to switch back to the temp file shapes at whatever row we're at plus the end column is now going to be equal to that temp and temp is now going to be the start location from above. Don't forget, we need to increment through both of these variables. So start column needs to progress up. And from the end column, we need to decrement or go down. And this pseudo code right here, we can take back to code.org, write our algorithm in, and then test it out. Let's head back and write our code. Back here at code.org, we have to go to the shape class. And down here, we're going to write our reverse shape method. Looking back at our algorithm, what do we have to do? First thing we have to do is write a for statement to look through everything. Inside our for statement, we're going to do int row equals zero because we got to know what row we're at. As long as the row is less than the my shapes dot length, we're going to go through the rows. Now we have to create our variables. These are going to be integers and we're going to do our start column and that's going to be equal to zero and we're going to create one for our end column and that's going to be equal to my shapes and it doesn't matter which index we pick remember in csa we do not deal with jagged 2d arrays that means for the exam all of your rows will be the same length so we're going to put zero just for good habit, and we're going to go through the length of that row. Don't forget, minus one. 
Now we're going to do our while statement. And we're going to make sure while the start column is less than the end column, we progress through. So while the start column is less than the end column, we want to do our swap. This time we need our data type for temp. If you look up here, we are using the shape as our data type and we're gonna to continue to do that. So shape temp is gonna equal my shapes. We need to specify the row we're at and this time we're gonna do the starting column position. Well then we're gonna flip flop the start and end. So my shapes and that's it the row and start column are going to be equal to my shapes at the row and end column now we need to set our end to the beginning so my shapes row and column is now equal to temp. We still have to increment and decrement through our variables. So start column needs to go up and then end column needs to decrement or go down. Don't forget your semicolons there. Let's clean up our code a little. Should end up with three curly cues. That's what we have. Let's check our spelling. Row should be spelled there. Start column, end column. That all looks spelled pretty well. Time will tell though, kids. We're not done. We have to call the reverse shape method and then print the results. Let's head back to my console. We need to call from the shape class. We need to call the reverse shapes method that we just created. We're passing along the my shapes. And then we're going to print off the my shape. So I'm just going to copy this, paste that in. Now, when I hit run, barring any spelling errors, we should get our array to print off triangle, circle, square, star, pentagon, donut, and then reversed square, circle, triangle, donut, pentagon, star. Well, let's see if we're right. Original time here and reversed right here. Looks like our code's working pretty good. Key takeaway from this lesson, again, is just understanding how to reverse a array. This is a lot like we did in unit three, lesson nine. And the big lesson we learned there is you just simply can't set one to the other because once we do, the other loses its value. We have to create a temporary variable to hold that value as we're swapping them. You've heard me say this before, but this again is a great question you might see on the APCSA FRQ. There's only a couple questions they can ask. Reversing an array is one of them. Hopefully this video helped you understand how to reverse a 2D array. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.